Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? One of the main questions that's been on the tips of everybody's tongues and on the minds of everybody within the gaming industry is where does Nintendo go from here? Where does Nintendo go from here? Where does Nintendo go from here? So everyone is saying that you have to wait up to a day or even a week to talk about the future of this company. Yeah, it was okay for Alpha Magazine to talk about the future of Nintendo a mere 14 hours later. But, you know, these same hypocritical frauds that will bleed all over my comment section below, they'll find some other goalpost to move around and be mad about and upset about things. So I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to make this video, and if it hurts your feelings, well, just know that I don't care. To you racist, hypocritical, and two-faced clowns that live within the confines of your own double standard as well, you're nothing but comedy towards me. And again, Alpha Omega Sin made his video, and I will be making my video after his video. So you clowns that have always hated me and been upset about me for my criticisms and being correct in how the company will turn out, feel free to move those goalposts back even further and to fabricate some other reason to get upset towards me. So where will the future of this company go? Where will it be? We all know how stubborn Nintendo can be and how stubborn they can be in their ways. How closed off from the rest of the gaming world they can often be. How judging by the xenophobian characteristics that they were demonstrating by the company during their involvement with Project Hammer, we can safely say this company simply does not play well with others and that people is the truth. Ever since the beginning, even during their regular Nintendo days, they have never played well with others. And Nintendo does wonders with their handhelds, and my only complaint towards their handhelds would be the real lack of a right analog stick. Outside of that, they serve me well. And their DNA efforts in mobile gaming, I will guarantee anybody their efforts there in mobile will make boatloads of cash. But why can't Nintendo translate how they handle their handhelds to how they handle their consoles. I, I really don't understand why they can't do that. It probably has to do with them having zero competition in the handheld market, but Nintendo's handhelds have always been complete experiences in their entirety, while every console after the Super Nintendo has always been lacking. So let's talk about the hardware and the software. First being the hardware. Now Nintendo as of late with the Wii and the Wii U has been making very cheap and very affordable hardware. They want to sell a lot of hardware, they want to sell to a lot of people and at an affordable price, so anybody who wants to go out and play Nintendo can play Nintendo. The advantage of this is, well, look no further than the Wii. The Wii sold like gangbusters and at its cheap price, everybody could go out and afford one. The problem with the Wii U is, is that the Wii U is not a Wii. The Wii U is more or less a new gen console without new gen features and hardware. There's no hard drive, there's no ethernet port, there's no video playback, there's barely any voice chat, there's a lot of standard features that a lot of gamers want that the Wii U doesn't have. And the Wii U, as you can tell by the sales, has suffered greatly from this. So, when you're looking into the future and you're wondering who will take over, or what will take over, whether it's a group of people or one person individually, you gotta wonder, how are they gonna decide to change things up, or are they gonna decide to keep things the same? Will they stick with the plan right now and have cheap and affordable consoles, or will they make something more cutting edge that will attract third party developers, attract a more diverse group of gamers, attract people that want to make more high end games? Will they make things that will attract people that want to do different things, as in features and Netflix and video playback? Because outside of gaming, even then, there's a lot of things the Wii U can't do that the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One can do such as Switch, and such as game streaming, and DVR, and game DVR, and things of that nature. Now, a lot of people seem to think that if Nintendo were to go the route of Microsoft and Sony, that they would lose who they are and become nothing but a carbon shell of the competition. I don't think that is true. Nintendo often made the mistake, in my opinion, in foregoing standards for innovation. When they can have innovation and they can also have standards you can build a machine that can compete directly with sony and microsoft and also add your innovation to it you make it so you can compete and then you innovate to it to make your games and make your console innovative like nintendo consoles have typically been so you compete while keeping your own identity so it'll be interesting to see where they go with their hardware I would much rather like them to make more powerful hardware because look people, technology at this point in time is moving very, 
very quickly. You cannot afford to put out an underpowered console. Look at the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Already, in year two, they're showing their age, they're showing their weakness, they're showing their lack of power. So, skimping out on the power, to me, is something that no console manufacturer should do. Now, onto the games. The games for Nintendo really aren't the problem. The features and the playability of the games and the diversity of games, to me, is the problem. A game like Super Mario 3D World would be a fun game. I'd love to play that game, but I'm not buying a new console for that game. And likewise, the game has no online. I really don't understand why Nintendo has this issue with online and voice chat in their games. It really bugs the hell out of me. It's like they're telling gamers that you are not mature enough, you are not able to handle, you are not able to use these features because we think lesser of you to be able to handle them. And honestly, when you think about it and you look at the people here on the YouTube gaming community, they may not be wrong. They may not be far off at all, but I still don't really like it. Another thing is they were really caught, as they admitted, unprepared for this generation as opposed to HD game development, sizes of staff, uh, development times, and things of that nature. And to me, that is something that whoever comes in, whether I said it's a group or one person, needs to change. That has to change. That cannot stay the same. Nintendo's primary weapon, their primary strength in gaming, is their first party in-house development. And even then, some of their collaborations. The problem is, is that they're so far and in between. They either need more people or a machine that is more efficient to make games with then part of the reason I think hurts them in their development cycle and their development process is that they were working on a weaker machine that they just they had to spend so much time prioritizing and optimizing for whether they had a more powerful machine they probably wouldn't need to spend as much time trying to fine-tune and polish their games that's just me that's my opinion it could be one way, it could be the other way. Nobody could really say for sure unless we actually went in there and somebody found out. Now as far as the types of games they make, they could kind of appeal you know, to a more adult audience. I mean, I know Nintendo is Nintendo, but they do have Fire Emblem, they do have Metroids, they do have games like Golden Sun, they do have games that can appeal to people that aren't children and yet they kind of refuse to use some of these franchises so Nintendo kind of needs to evolve they need to evolve with the gamer I feel like most gamers have played games and moved on from Nintendo but Nintendo hasn't moved on with the gamer now there's no problem keeping in and keeping in touch with the older gamer or the newer gamer I meant to say as in people are just starting to game but for people that have been around as long as me who have started with the regular Nintendo, we kind of want more and kind of want something more and different. But yeah, who really knows what could happen? I mean, we could have an entire development shakeup. I mean, look at Sony. Sony was primarily making, you know, Japanese style games up until last generation when the Xbox 360 became so powerful and dominant. And now this generation too. You look at PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. The bulk of their most highly rated games are not from Japanese developers. They are all from Western or European studios. That's a fact. Now, do I think Nintendo will turn out like this? I probably don't. But in the end, wherever they decide to go, hopefully it's in a better direction, they need a man, they need a, um, they need a, a Steve Kerr type personality. And what I mean by that is a lot of people think that new leadership can be bad and why get somebody new? It could get worse, it may not get better, but the thing about it is, people, ever since the Super Nintendo finished its life and the N64 came out, Nintendo's been on a downward spiral, or as some people say, a downward incline. The N64, the GameCube, the Wii, the Wii U, each and every generation, the systems get less and less games and less and less quality games and less support from the industry and the gamers as a whole. That's a fact. I mean, you can look at the Wii and say otherwise, but selling to a bunch of soccer moms and, you know, all that other stuff is, isn't really selling to the gamer, at least in my opinion. So, maybe they'll shake things up, and by being a Steve Kerr, I meant to say that Steve Kerr came in to a successful coaching situation, 
because Mark Jackson was a good coach, but Steve Kerr came in in his very first year and took the Golden State Warriors to the championship over LeBron James and his Cavaliers. So that's not to say that you can't bring in a new guy, a new leader, and him come in and do some better things. Or better yet, her come in and do some better things. We really don't know. One thing I really don't want to happen is though, I, I, I don't want to see Miyamoto in charge. I don't want to see him as the CEO or the leader. He is more of a game developer, a talent evaluator, a game overseer. I can't see him brokering third-party deals, brokering third-party relations, brokering second and third-party collaborations and things like that. They also need a guy that can be upfront and personal with the gamer. If they're going to be making these Nintendo Directs, they need somebody that can speak well and properly and can communicate to the gamer. Reggie, to me, is not that guy. He's just, you know, a mouthpiece. He's just a bunch of hot air. He says a bunch of crap. He likes to puff his chest out and pound his chest and talk a big game, but he never really pulls through with anything. So it'll be interesting to see where Nintendo goes, but hopefully it'll go for the better.